This is a uh, Hitachi voltage regulator for a Datsun or Nissan for uh, alternator. And what we have here is what I think might be causing a problem with inadequate charging. I put a new I put a new alternator in the in the car, and it kind of works. I mean, it'll charge if you if you don't have too much of a load on it. In other words, the alternator is putting out current, but just not really what I think is enough to keep up with the demands of the system, especially with all the uh, electrical systems fully functioning like the AC, you know, the blower motor, the AC, the AC clutch and the lights, the headlights, all those things are pulling quite a bit of power so it would sag noticeably to the point where the battery was discharging under normal, you know. So what we're going to do here, what I decided to do is following the field service manual, first thing I did was I pulled the, re the, the uh, regulator out, I checked the core gap, that's the gap between the this uh, top part of the relay and the actual core of the coil that pulls it down. That's supposed to be set like between 0.6 and 1 millimeter. So I did that using some feeler gauges. Did that on both sides. That's that gap right there. And then I set the uh, point gap. Well, actually I didn't set the point gap first. First what I did was I I made sure that all these contacts were square. Some of them were kind of offset, like especially this one here. That one was not that. Those points are about 50% contact. So I had to monkey around with these things a little bit to get them all to to line up and hit right over the point contact on the uh, on the movable part. So I did that first. Then I used some uh, thousand grit uh, sandpaper. Uh, so I that around here somewhere. Here. And basically, you just insert this that way, that way, while holding pressure either on or off, whatever. You know, get both sides of the contacts, in, in other words, on both the top and the bottom. Do that. Um, clip, hit it with some contact cleaner. Uh, check the align Again, check the alignment of the points. Make sure they're hitting right, on top, right where they need to hit so you get the best possible contact point. Now, this worries me a little bit. Uh, <laughs> that coil looks like it's gotten hot, and I'm not sure why that would be. I'm going to go back and review the circuit and try to figure it out. I don't know if this is just a, a coil that's always on, and maybe over the past 40 years it's simply gotten hot, uh, or maybe this one duty cycles more often and therefore doesn't get as hot. I don't know. I'm not really sure what's going on there. But this could be a problem. Now, I combed it out, and, you know, it read like... Uh, so like I don't remember what the ohms were on it, but you know it may be okay, but it really bothers me seeing this this gray goop coming out, like maybe something partially melted. I'm not sure what happened there, and the fact that that tape is you know black with heat. So this could be a problem. You know that might be part of the issue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back into the car, you know, with this exposed, and first of all check the functionality of these, make sure I see these things going up and down. You know, I can just push it and see what it does to the charge cycle, um, and see and go from there. Now, there is a way to simply—I mean, you could just simply up the voltage adjustment by turning this screw in. Basically, if I understand what that does, pushing that screw in tends to hold this up, which probably means that's in the uh, full charge, high voltage, get all the field coil current it can get mode. And when the when the output gets too high, voltage gets too high. I guess this inter, this relay energizes. When it does that, it pulls down, and I think it flows current through a um, through these power resistors to reduce the output. I did check those resistors too. They do seem that you see me. I wrote the 40 and the 10. Uh, that that section was 40 ohms. That section was 10 ohms. You have to check that with the relay uh, points move though, because that's it. Basically, when this circuit opens up, I think it's this one. The, uh, then, then the current flows through this. It doesn't like, just drop off the voltage completely to the alternator. It just puts a reduced voltage to the alternator through some kind of voltage divider. Um, can't remember, they, I think they call that one the smoothing resistor. I'm not sure. I think oh, Maybe that was part of the voltage divider. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, so this is ready to go back in. And I'll monkey around with this adjustment screw. They said adjusting voltage right here, so it could be as simple as that, and just adjusting this tension, deciding when is it going to turn on and turn off, you know. 
Uh, but I still want the points to be good because even if these things, even if these things are opening and closing, if the points are bad, it's going to limit the current and go through it no matter what. So even if you're going wide open, that is, it's full full current, no dropping resistor or anything to the field winding on the alternator. Well, if you've got resistance in here, it's going to have resistance in there, and it's going to limit the output no matter what you do. So I think the important part is make sure these contacts are good and clean, and then I can try it out again. Anyway, oh, this plug goes into a, a, uh, a female socket that it matches, at least the contacts are female socket, and there's a little bit of green stuff where a couple of these plugged into, so I use my, uh, my wire brushes, the kind you use for like, cleaning paint guns, and you know, cleaned the inside of that crud out, and then uh, sprayed some uh, contact cleaner on that. So, hopefully, if there's any corrosion or resistance in there, I mean, I'm starting to come to the conclusion that the biggest problem with electrical systems on really old cars isn't necessarily the wiring, although it certainly can be, but it's connections, 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 connections. These old bullet connectors, you know, they're. I'm sure the engineers never anticipated be people driving these things 40, 50, 60 years later. So, you know, they just didn't design for that kind of longevity, you know. So, that's probably sort of like an old vintage TVs. You get the same kind of issues. Tube pins are a problem. Well, connector pins are a problem, you know. It's the same kind of problem you see everywhere. So, some of my vintage TV experiences is kind of replaying itself in the vintage car experience. Look for poor wiring and bad connections and... You know, nine times out of ten, that's it. Uh, rather than some complicated, you know, impossible, never happens kind of problem, you know, look for the simple stuff. Always go to the simple stuff first. Anyway, I'll be putting this back in a little bit and testing it all out and see how it goes. More later.